Okay, um, welcome to this class, Introduction to uh, Machine Learning and Reinforcement Learning. My name is Chang Ho Kim. Uh, this is my email address. Um, I'm sure that most of students in this class has background of electromagnetics, power, in, uh, power, power electronics, or semiconductor design but I'm pretty sure that machine learning and the enforcement learning is a will be basic tool for all the engineers. So I think, I, I think this, I would like to give this opportunity to the students uh, who may not be in major in artificial intelligence, but still I hope they can understand the basic principles and develop capabilities to apply this AI and machine learning methodologies for their engineering problems. Because um, we can, uh, I can give lectures using PowerPoint slides or many other different ways, but I really prefer to use the notebook because there are a lot of uh, mathematics and equations are involved. Uh, without understanding details of mathematics involved in machine learning and reinforcement learning, I think academically we are not so much confident on the concept. So um, this is my approach that I'm going to use many <clears throat> diagrams and equations to give you detailed concept, very precise concept of machine learning and reinforcement learning. Uh, I think this uh, screen will be uploaded to the YouTube you know, in a week after the class. So you can revisit again this lecture uh, contents using YouTube. Also, you can see the screen of my notebook. Uh, and uh, I think teaching assistant Songgu will give you the copy of this class notebook so that you can uh, use for your own study. So the first uh, lecture of my class is introduction to machine learning. I think this uh, because I'm writing all the equations and diagrams in the notebook on the iPad, it may take some time and the class will be very slow, but I recommend this approach because then you can look at it and you can join and think about it. So even though the process is slow, I think let's start uh, this way. I think this is the overview concept, uh, overview of the AI. Part of artificial intelligence is called machine learning. Usually, artificial intelligence are replacing, replacing human brain using model. So we are trying to understand the operation of our brain and we develop certain model to understand our brain activity. Then this model is transmitted to computer coding and the computers understand those model and they repeat the activities of our brain. So I think the first thing I would like to emphasize uh, is that traditional artificial intelligence is model-based uh, approach. Because of that, we usually develop rule. So these are the 
traditional AI engineering. So because of that, we usually develop mathematics or we use the flow chart or this, this approach is converted to a computer coding. For example, if you have an air conditioner and we, have a, we are sitting in a living room at home, sometimes if the temperature is very hot or the humidity is high, we turn on the air conditioner. Let's assume that somebody is uh, watching our activities and we figured out that If temperature is over 20 degree, we turn on the air conditioner. If the temperature is below 20 degree, we turn off the air conditioner. So, okay, the logic and model on this case, artificial intelligence case is that if the temperature is over 20 degree, please turn on the air conditioner. If the temperature below than 20 degree, please turn off the air conditioner, something like that. That kind of rule-based or model-based um, intelligence is called, I think, artificial intelligence. So traditional uh, intelligence, artificial intelligence uh, engineers are trying to understand the rule or model or mathematical description of brain activity. However, the focus of our class today, or in this semester, is machine learning. That is the part of artificial intelligence, and it is a kind of black box, which means that we don't know the principles or rule or model of our brain. We don't care about that. We don't wanna, or we don't. Uh, plan to understand the, our brain activities. We just, this uh, machine learning is based on data. Data means that if we have a black box, there is an input and output. We don't care about what's going on inside our brain. As far as we have input data and output data using those two data, we can train this our brain. That is called machine learning. So in this machine learning case, training is very important part of the intelligence. So in a lot of uh, classes in this semester, I'm gonna talk about the training process, mathematical foundations and the sequences especially forward propagation and backward propagation is the most critical part of this training process. In this case, data can be uh, given from the human or environment. Or in this day, sometimes this data is generated by a computer. So in machine learning, data is very important part of the material which enables intelligence. Once again, I'd like to emphasize is that machine learning is the core part of our class and this is the core part of our current artificial intelligence. After this semester, I would suggest our students to use the machine learning word, wording than artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is very broad concept and very traditional approach. But in this current going on, um, it, intelligence is more likely machine learning. The last part is called Deep learning.
deep learning is small part of the machine learning. Here, number of layer is over 20. In machine learning, uh, there is the input layer and there is the output layer. Between them, there are hidden layers. Each layer is composed of perceptron. I think the next week we are going to more talk about the perceptron and the layers. So if we have more layers, the accuracy of the intelligence is becoming higher and higher. That is very well known. Of course, this is enabled by the, by the improvement of computing power. But deep learning means, first of all, all number of layer is more than 20. I think in a few years or 10 years, the, the number of layers of our deep neural network or machine learning network will be more than 1,000. Probably in the future, there will be a millions of layers. But that's why we call it that is deep learning. In order to do the forward propagation and backward propagation, as I mentioned before, forward propagation and backward propagation is a very core part of our uh, machine learning and training process. And uh, then if the number of layer is becoming higher and higher, we need more, com more computing power. That is the cost of deep learning. So if somebody wanna have very strong capability of machine learning and deep learning, they need to have more very strong computing power. That's why the Google and Amazon and those big companies are strong in AI and machine learning, and they are spending more money on GPU and DRAM purchase. So this means the cost is increasing. And of course, if we have more and more layers, uh, I mean, layer means the input layer, hidden layer, output layer. And if the number of layers is increasing, accuracy is increasing, and also so it could be a solution for complicated problem. Such as GPT-3. So at the beginning of this class today, I'm talking about the structure there. What is artificial intelligence and what is machine learning and what is deep learning? Uh, I'm not used to use the term, okay. As I mentioned in the previous slide, I told you that in the machine learning is a kind of black box. It has input data. It has output data. In the case of machine learning, data is very essential part of the training process. And as I mentioned before, the data may be generated by human being or nature environment or even computer environment. 
computer can generate this data. When we have an input, this black box generate output data. That is called forward propagation. It involves a lot of mathematical calc uh, uh, matrix calculation because input uh, is a vector. Out, this is digital data. Output is also a vector, but this is more likely probability. If this black box is a CNN, if you show the picture, it will tell you whether this is the cat or tiger. So input is a kind of digital vector. It could be a one-dimensional vector, it could be two-dimensional vector, or it could be a multi-dimensional uh, tensor. Output is a kind of vector, but it should have certain probabilities. These are usually used for classification. And in the case of forward propagation, there is a lot of matrix calculations. Because matrix calculation is a kind of parallel processing, this black box uh, for this for the propagation, computer need to be, be able to have more parallel computing. That's why GPU is more suitable for this uh, uh, machine learning uh, calculation. If the output data is not correct, for example, um, we have output Y and Y dash is the label means that this is our target target value. This is our for the propagation. There might be some difference. Sometimes Y is not equal to Y dash. Let's assume that you show the picture of the cat, but sometimes this black box generate uh, uh, give you an answer say this is tiger. Sometimes this give maybe give you wrong answer. Sometimes it gives a right answer. Depending on whether this output of black box is close to your target or not, you have to update this black box. That is called backward propagation. Backward propagation means that you update your black box so that this may give you the right answer. So there are a lot of iterations of forward propagation and backward propagation. If you wanna have more uh, accuracy, you have to have more iterations to upgrade this black box. And if you wanna have more iterations, that means you need more data, big data. That's why in machine learning, having big amount of data with a label target value is more very important requirement so that you can develop very accurate uh, machine learning black box. In the case of uh, backward propagation, you have a lot of matrix calculation, mat matrix calculation and differentiation. Um, in some way, our data for the black box is kind of digital machine because computer is digital. So data is digital, output is digital. So because of digital operation of this forward propagation and backward propagation, um, I think we need to understand matrix calculations and matrix operation. In the second case, the output is probability. As I mentioned before, before, output is the probability. So you should be able to understand a theory of probability. 
And also during the backward propagation, there is a lot of differentiation because you have to be able to optimize this black box as soon as possible. One way to find the optimal point of this black box is using the differentiation operation. That's why in, in backward propagation, we have a lot of matrix calculations and differentiations. And inside black box, there is a basic element. That is So uh, millions of uh, in, inside black box of machine learning, there are millions or billions of perceptrons. Those are the basic build, building box of building uh, element of this building bo uh, black box. So, the sequence of this class will be like this. Next week, probably Monday, I'm going to talk a lot about the perception, basic structure and mathematics. And then uh, we will discuss uh, more about the forward propagation. Probably next Wednesday, I'm going to talk about uh, backward propagation. In, in this black box output data, there are certain uh, here, output of forward propagation and target value may have some differences. And because if, if we want to update the, this uh, building blocks, we need to define some cost function. And a week after next week, I will talk about cost functions. Here, we need to understand the cost function. Also, we have to understand entropy. Those are subjects of a week after next week. And uh, those are the sequence of sequences of the first three weeks of this class. Are there any students who want to ask questions at this moment? Now I would like to talk about why this machine learning is so powerful. It will change our whole life, economy, societies, and every aspect. Even engineering will be affected significantly by the machine learning. I think there are three elements which makes this machine learning very powerful. As I mentioned in the previous slide, if this is machine learning black box, we need input data and output data and labeled data. We need three sets of data. As I mentioned before, this input data can be obtained from the human or it can be obtained from nature or it can be obtained from the computer environment. Anyway, if we have an input data, machine learning will calculate the output, that process is called forward propagation. If the, there is some difference between real value and our calculate value, we have to update this uh, black box. 
that process is called backward propagation. In order to update these uh, parameters of black box, there are a lot of parameters that is called weight. Later, we will give you more idea about what is weight. And millions of billions of uh, weights are in, uh, contained inside this black box. In order to update this black uh, parameters precisely, we need to have more and more iteration. More and more iteration means we need more data. So power of machine learning first comes from big data. Where I they from, come from? I think the first reason why we we were we are able to have big amount of data is because of internet, especially because of uh, COVID nineteen. More and more our activities are being done on computers and internet, so somebody can gather more and more information and data. Google, Amazon, Microsoft, they have very strong platform to gather more and more big data. The data is a rice and oil and money. Of course, this data can be obtained from human nature computer. and this big data traditionally this big data came from human and internet and youtube but now in the future i think more and more data will come from nature one of the nature Part of that is the bio or medical data. Because of COVID-19, prob probably people are more interested in now in healthcare and medical data. Probably 10 years later, even someone can have DNA information of everybody on earth. That will be a big amount of data. And now, in a case of engineering, especially in engineering, I'm not good in this notebook uh, yet. Songu, if you are there, please come to me. I want to change the color of my pen to blue, but I, I can do that. So anyway, <clears throat> data is very big, important part of, okay. I want to change the color of this pen. Okay, blue, blue, okay, thank you. In order to make machine learning very, very uh, intelligent, we need more and more data. And as I said before, traditionally, someone gathered more and more data from human activities or from the nature. But in a, we, because we are working in engineering world, I think, uh, especially 
our, in our class, some students are, has background of semiconductor and electromagnetics. In those cases, computer simulation can produce a data, data set. That is one of the focus of my class. <clears throat> some people, some group of uh, researchers at KAIST may working on some vision technologies using machine learning. Or some group of people may working on natural language processing. Especially in the case of uh, vision technology using machine learning, they are trying to get a more and more picture of human animals and flowers and so on. How they do that? Because we are using the smartphone and we are uploading those pictures into SNS, those will become a big data for their for somebody, for some machine learning. But in this class, uh, I'm gonna spend, focus more on the computer simulated data for uh, engineering design optimization and prediction. For example, if in, in a case of circuit uh, design, we are doing the, a lot of HFSS simulation, uh, uh, HSPI simulation. In the case of electromagnetics, we are using NSOFT or ADS software simulation. So in, by doing those simulations, we are generating a lot of uh, predictions using computer modeling or mathematical model. Uh, but our approach in this class is that uh, we don't develop any model. We just generate the data and then using those data, we can do the engineering predictions and also engineering, math, engineering optimization. Those are the subjects of your term project in this class. I think this part is very important part, important part of my class. How we can generate the data. Or machine learning. As I mentioned before, during the forward propagation and backward propagation, we need a lot of iteration. If number of iteration is increasing, that will give you more accuracy. So if you have enough amount of data in your machine learning black box, this machine learning black box may be more smarter than you and it may remember more than you, and it can make a decision better than you. Now I'm talking about the big data. Second part of the, uh, the power, powerful uh, origin of power is the deep learning algorithm. This is the big, uh, big learning algorithm and it has such as CNN, RNN, LSTM, GAN, A lot of groups in the world, including KAIST and MIT, Stanford, and Google, Amazon, they are trying to develop a deep learning algorithm. And our, our class, half of our class will be uh, used to explain students what is CNN, what is RNN, LSTM, GAN, and transformable learning. The, Algorithm itself is very simple. It is not very complicated one, but now the, the research direction of this algorithm is that they want to develop this algorithm with lower power, real time, less latency,
So now the researchers in machine learning are spending more and more effort to develop, develop these models, uh, deep learning algorithm models, in order to achieve lower power consumption because electricity is very expensive one. And also sometimes we are not operate this machine learning using the battery. So power consumption reduction is very important part of our machine learning. And so also in a case of automotive vehicle, we wanna, we wanna make a decision instantaneously. As I mentioned before, right now, smartphone and YouTube may be ma major source of data generation, but in the near future, automotive vehicle will be a key part of data generation. That's why uh, let, uh, Tesla, Google, uh, Hyundai, all the uh, platform companies are now jumped into the automotive vehicle uh, business because automotive vehicle is a very important part of platform of next generation, which will generate more and more big data. This big data will be used for training for machine learning. Anyway, in, if, if you want to generate, or uh, if you want to have a AI capability in your smartphone or automotive vehicle, most important uh, requirement is the low power consumption. And that's so in the algorithm level or circuit level or whatever level, low power consumption is very important. Second requirement is the real time. In a, especially in automotive vehicle, you, you see that they have to make a brake decision in, an, in millisecond. So it has to have very fast. Sometimes you are, you are talking with the internet. If they respond not immediately, sometimes you feel some delay. Uh, people are not patient enough to wait until they respond uh, fast enough. So latency is also important. The computing power, because the, if you wanna have very strong computing power, like a GPT-3, that is the recent Google, I think, uh, the interpreter and the writing machine, they need a lot of computing powers. So if you can develop a uh, deep learning algorithm with less power, computing power means that you need less GPU and DRAM. And that is the target the future direction of deep learning algorithm direction. The last part of the uh, is computing power. At this moment, GPU and DRAM is, is determining the computing power. Uh, interesting, interesting is interesting is that DRAM is becoming more important than GPU. That's why DRAM price is going up. Why is that? Because our computing architecture is von Neumann architecture. That means the Whenever GPU want to calculate this matrix in the forward propagation and backward propagation, they have to bring the data from the DRAM and GPU will calculate the, the, the matrix calculation and it has to bring back to the DRAM. G, GPU does not have enough memory to store the data. We have a big data. Big data is stored in DRAM. Of course, in the behind, there is a story state drive, but for the most of uh, matrix calculation here, we have to bring the data from DRAM and we have to calculate at the GPU. So this matrix calculation means the parallel computing. So it is very important to have parallel connection need parallel connection between GPU and memory. And also DRAM is becoming more important. As I mentioned before, in order to make a real time machine learning, we need to have a less latency. And less latency means the DRAM should be very fast. 
the bottleneck of uh, AI calcula machine learning calculation between GPU and memory is that usually uh, the data transmission and reception from DRAM to G GPU is very critical. And usually DRAM is smaller than GPU. So actually most important element of surprisingly in the computing, which determines the computing power of machine learning is DRAM. That's why the stock price of Samsung and SK Hynix is going up. This is a joke. I, I'm, I will not be responsible for your investment. Just kidding. And our group has developed a new uh, computer architecture that is called HBM. Later, at the end of this semester, at the end of this semester, I'm going to give you some idea of new computing architecture that is very critical a part of AI calculation that is called HBM. Our, our students in our lab are doing a lot of research on HBM. HBM has basically very parallel interconnection between GPU and DRAM. And also at the same time, in order to minimize the power consumption, we make the interconnection length as short as possible. Because of that, Capac our capacitance is becoming very small, then computing power will be less and less. A lot of this requirement of uh, AI algorithm has to be transmitted to the, this computing architecture. Um, those HBM and PIM HBM and 3D structures, uh, computing structures, our research subjects of our group. Of course, uh, some of students are trying to design this HBM and uh, PIM HBM and 3D structures using the uh, reinforcement learning. So this is summar a summary of second part of my presentation today. Uh, saying that the origin of machine learning power, origin of machine learning power, it came coming from three elements, big data, uh, deep learning algorithm, and computing power. In the previous slide, I'm, I was talking about the importance of big data. Uh, of course, in this semester, I'm going to mostly talk about AI algorithm, a little bit about computing power. But at the beginning of my class, I will briefly talk about the increase of our big data. Personal computer came to market at the 1980s, early 1980s. By, at the time, we used the floppy disk to store data. At the time, internet was not connected. 
we have each separate computers and usually printers are assigned. So we used a lot of documentations using the personal computer. At the time, we had the IBM, XT, AT, and Apple computer came to the market at this moment. At the time, I was a first year freshman student. Aldo, Aldo, can you hear me? Kayon, can you? Tell yes. Or oh, Aldo, yes. what yes. what what did you do in 1980? Uh, I wasn't born yet. You wasn't born yet. So mm. oh, okay. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> In 1990, I think, internet. At the time, I think we used Netscape. Later on, it is dominant market is Explore. Now, Chrome seems to be main market holder. In 2000, Data was increased because of the uh, smartphone plus camera. Oh, about it at this moment, it is because of HDTV, Netflix, YouTube. In 10 years, this is my expectation. So in this slide, I want to tell you that they, at certain times, every 10 days is my own principle. At certain period of uh, our life, uh, there are certain technologies that enables more production of big data. In 1980s, uh, I think the PC emergency of PC will be the maybe, may, main driving force for big data generation. In 1990, probably internet, and in 2010 to two, 2010, around 2010, we have a smartphone and camera. Everybody's taking pictures. And right now it is more driven by YouTube and HDTV. Probably in next 10 years will be a, a fight uh, to uh, develop dominant uh, platform for big data generations. Automotive vehicle seems to be the next candidate and probably in the future, more, more and more people want to live longer lives and they want to overcome cancer, virus and so on. Somebody may want to use artificial intelligence technologies to uh, find right solutions, me uh, me uh, recipes and the medicines and, and those for those cases, probably someone want to collect all the DNA data for every human being or not. I, I think those will be the uh, probably next big data sources.
There are uh, three type, different types of machine learning. The first one is supervised learning. The second uh, part of machine learning is unsupervised learning. Last part of the uh, machine learning is called reinforcement learning. I would say our class focus will be more on this area. And uh, as I mentioned that data and labeling came from uh, the platform. Uh, the platform may be, uh, may be on human activity or could be nature. But in our class, data will be generated by a computing environment. So this supervised learning can be used for engineering prediction. It can replace the computer simulations. Computer simulation usually, engineering simulation usually takes a lot of time and computer resources and it takes uh, time. But let's assume some DNA deep neural network can do the engineering production that may be very interesting and exciting subject. And if we train very well, uh, it can predict very efficiently. The second uh, part of the uh, machine learning is the reinforcement learning. And these are usually good for optimal solution. Or it could be useful for game or stock investment. In reinforcement learning, they, they have environment and they have reward and they have value and policy. Um, at the second part of our class, we, are, well, we will go very deeply into the reinforcement learning. In enforcement learning, we have to define environment, reward, value, and policy. In the enforcement learning, we do not have answer, but they itself, themselves find the optimal solution. That is very interesting approach. But in the supervised learning, we have to give them data with input data and output data. And they train themselves to find the best uh, black box. But optimal in the enforcement learning case, we do not give them answer. They find themselves. Especially in the uh, AlphaGo game, they use the enforcement learning. So in our, uh, we are in, in our class, we are not going to talk about unsupervised learning a lot. We will spend most of the time for supervised learning and reinforcement learning. By combining them, we can achieve some engineering solution. And application will be, some could be IC design or electromagnetics.
in this slide, I want to show you the overview of, I mean, the basic structure of machine learning. There are three different categories, but by using this slide, I want to give you uh, the overview of my class. At the beginning of my class, I told you that the basic element of the basic element of building box, building black box, is perceptron. I, I told you that perceptron is Uh, this notebook is not. Battery is gone. Sangu, are you there? Good job, I such an air. Battery, but I didn't know. Can I? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, before the end of this class, I would like to give you a short introduction of perception. As I mentioned before, This pen is not uh, good to me at this moment. So as I, as I mentioned before, this perception is very important building block of uh, this machine learning. So I wanna, before the end of this class, I wanna give you brief idea of, about the uh, perception. Next week, we're gonna spend more time on this. This is a, a basic building block of uh, percept, uh, the black machine learning, and we call it this is the perceptron. First, x1, w1, x1 plus w2, x2 plus w3, x3, the input vector 
and this is called the weight. Weight uh, matrix are multiply uh, each input vector value is multiplied by each weight of this line and they are all summarized together. This goes to an activation function. There are many different types of activation function. For example, there are linear function or sigmoid, sigmoid function or tangent hyperbolic function. There are many different types of activation function. In this case, I'm gonna uh, you I'm gonna show you a sigmoid case, and then output y is becoming. So the, each perceptron comp is composed of input vector, weight matrix, and activation function. As I mentioned uh, before in, in the class, there will be billions of billions of perceptron. So basically, this perceptron has to be able to do the calculations of input vector and weight matrix. And then also it has to have a capability of activation function. This activation function is called sigmoid function. And it has the shape as If x is becoming infinite, it approaches to 1. If x becomes minus infinite, it becomes 0. And it has certain prob probabilities, 0 to 1. As I mentioned before, in, in this machine learning, if you show picture, it could this machine learning can tell you that whether this is tiger or cat. Probably this area could be tiger and this area could be can. So it determined, uh, it, it X probably can be a color. So depending on color, this machine learning can decide whether this picture is a cat or a tiger. There are certain areas, it, it may be very difficult to decide whether this is a tiger or a cat, but anyway, this slope is determined by this weight, and this position of this transition is determined by B. So during the back propagation of machine learning, you decide back propagation means back propagation means the this, uh, update W and B. So to make this curve more well fitted to the supervised data. So this is the brief end of my class today. Uh, we will more talk about this perception next week. Let me summarize my class today. Um, today's my lecture is focused on the introduction of machine learning and the machine learning has three different uh, diagram. The big picture is artificial intelligence. It is more likely model-based. And machine learning, learning is the uh, major focus of our lecture uh, in this class. Machine learning is the data-based learning. And as far as you produce the data for them, and with answers, labeling, the machine learning is becoming more smarter and smarter. And this data can be in, uh, supplemented by human or environment or computer. Among the machine learning, if the number of layer input hidden and output layer is, number is going higher and higher, 
they have more power accuracy. And the, during the training process of machine learning, they have forward propagation and backward propagation, and input data and output data and labeled data. And during the forward propagation, there are a lot of matrix calculations and output of this forward propagation is a probability distribution. And it is, a, a, in other words, we can call it that is the classification. During the backward propagation, depending on the error between forward propagation and your labeling target, number that is defined by cost function. Usually that is called entropy or the mean square error. There are many different cost functions. Depending on this cost function, we update the perception or black box of the machine learning. And during those process, we have matrix calculation and differentiation process. Inside this black box, there are uh, perceptions, billions of billions of perceptions are there. And later on, I will talk about the perception. And there are three uh, uh, powerful origin, uh, origin of power of machine learning. First one is the because of we have big data. Second thing is that we have a uh, deep learning algorithm uh, such as CNN, RNN, LSTM, and GAN and transformer learning. Those are the subject of our discussions in this semester at the first part of the uh, classes uh, before the midterm exam. And also we need to have a computing power, especially GPU and DRAM is very important part of this computing power. We need to have more parallel connection to increase the bandwidth or to reduce the power consumption and to reduce the uh, latency. And so we need some uh, novel computing architecture such as HBM, PIM, uh, HBM and 3D structures. At the end of this class, we will shortly talk about those uh, future computing architectures. By combining these three, uh, we can make really machine learning uh, strong enough. Um, conventional GPU and DRAM architecture may not be enough. Now people are doing researches on uh, quantum computing. Computing and probably edge computing. Why, why uh, people are talking about com quantum computing in these days? Because they know that computing power is very important part of machine learning. So uh, for example, let's assume that Google, uh, let's assume this, uh, I'm a Google CEO, uh, then we want to develop more uh, platform for big data and probably autonomous vehicle might be the next platform. So I want to spend more resources and a human power to develop automotive vehicles. Of course, I will all allocate certain group of people to develop uh, deep learning algorithm, including reinforcement learning algorithm. Also, I will invest some money for computing power. And HBM and 3D uh, PIM HBM might be a good solution at this moment, but we want to reduce more uh, power consumption further, and we want to also operate machine learning uh, algorithm in real time, we need really novel computing architectures. Probably uh, that's why I'm spending more time for com quantum computing. <clears throat> and in, in this class, we, we are going to spend more time between the supervised learning and the enforcement learning. There are some courses on the supervised learning, but there are not many courses on supervised uh, enforcement learning. I'm going to give you lectures on supervised learning uh, as well as reinforcement learning. I would like to develop some unique area called this is I, I, this, this area I, I, I usually call AI engineering. Supervised learning can be used for prediction of engineering problem and reinforcement learning may be used for optimal solution. So by combining two that we may not, uh, maybe this AI machine learning can replace the engineering, uh, engineering capabilities. Probably we may not need to work, probably computer and AI can do all the engineering work. Probably we can spend, uh, go out and spending time with our friend. 
And at the last minute of this first lecture, I want, I want to talk about the perception, as I mentioned before. Very important thing is that this is really the basic. I'm sure that this battery may be gone. So perception is really the basic building block of machine learning. It has input vector, matrix, weight matrix, and activation function. There are a bunch of different activation functions and uh, uh, cost functions. And, and next week and after a week, we will discuss about more about this perception uh, and for the propagation and backward propagation.